this video we'll talk about geometric series. Now we're going to talk about sums and it's a geometric series because series is when you add up all the terms. Well there's a nice little derivation for this one too but I'm just going to teach it to you giving you the formula. Basically it ends up to be a sub take our first term and then we have 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r. So let's see what we know. Partial sum. I have a sub 1 is equal to 2. I also need my r so r is going to be equal to 8 divided by 2 equal 4. 32 divided by 8 equal 4. So r is equal to 4 and so we found r and we're ready to go. The only other thing we need to know is that n is equal to 7 so s sub 7 is equal to a sub 1 which is 2 times 1 minus my ratio which is 4 to the n happens to be 7 and then I have 1 minus my common ratio which is 4. Well if I do that I'm just going to come to my calculator and simplify the top but I know this is going to be negative 3 and if I do the top I have 2 times the parenthesis 1 minus 4 caret 7 close my parenthesis but it's not 22 delete and enter and we have negative 3, 2, 7, 6, 6 divided by negative 3 so I get a positive number and then I'm going to just let my calculator do the divided by negative 3 and we get 10,922. If I sum up all those terms in that sequence, all seven of the first terms, I'll have 10,922. So remembering that we have this, really this was just the word, so we have this nice little formula here. Let's look at this. We need a sub 1. Well, that's when k equal 1. Remember we talked about different variables could be down here. We're used to i, but it could be a k. It could be any variable. So 2 to the first is just going to be 2. And the common ratio, well, the common ratio is the base on our exponent. So the common ratio here is going to be 2. So if we want to find 10 terms, then that means that n is equal to 10. S sub 10 is going to be equal to a sub 1 which is 2 times 1 minus my r which is 2 but to the 10th and then we're going to divide that by 1 minus my rate which is 2. So on the bottom 1 minus 2 is going to be negative 1 and I'm going to go to my calculator because I'm not sure what 2 to the 10 is so 2 parenthesis 1 minus my 2 caret 10 and I get negative 2046 and divided by negative 1 would be a positive 2046. So summing up the first 10 terms of that formula 2 to the k would be 2046. Now we need to talk about infinite geometric series. Those were all finite because we wanted to find up to a certain term. But we can look at this infinite geometric series and we have this 1 half to the n and I want to put that in my calculator. I want to do some exploring here. So 0.5 caret x and then I want to look at my table. So I want to look at my table and I can see that my numbers are getting smaller and smaller as I go through my table and it keeps getting farther and farther to decimal place is 5 now in front of that 6 so I keep getting more and more decimal places and eventually even if we only rounded to two decimal places this number this 17 right here would be point zero 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 we have five of them um, seven six well that rounds to approximately zero so we want to do the sum of infinity infinite number so I have my a sub 1 my 1 minus r to the n over 1 minus r but now this is going to go to infinity so this n is actually infinity well, I've just said and increases this tends toward it tends zero. So this would actually be then a sub one times one minus zero over one minus r. Well, what's one minus zero? It's just one. So we can say that uh, summing up the infinite series is just going to be a sub one times one, or just a sub one over one minus r. We have now found this nice little geom infinite series. As long as r isn't one, it has to be less than one. And if r is greater than one, then we don't actually have an infinite. You can't find an infinite sum. So we're looking at this one and it says determine whether it has a finite sum and if it does find the limiting value. That's what does it tend toward. Remember it's s sub infinity is equal to a sub 1 over 1 minus r. a sub 1 is equal to 10 
and let's figure out what our r is. It looks like it might be 1 half, negative 1 half, but let's double check. Negative 5 divided by 10, sure enough, that's negative 1 half. And just to double check it, if I have 5 halves divided by negative 5, remember you can multiply by the reciprocal, so negative uh, 1 over 5. Now I have negative 1 half. So I know that s of infinity for us is 10, that's my a sub 1, divided by 1 minus r. So I have 1 minus my r, which is negative 1 half. So we have 10 to the 1 plus 1 half. And your book is going to answer with fractions. So we're going to say that this is 10 divided by 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2, or 3 halves. And again, you're going to learn this one really well, aren't you? You can multiply by the reciprocal instead of dividing, and that will give us 20 over 3. So s of infinity is equal to 20 over 3. And this sum keeps getting closer and closer to 20 over 3. That's the limiting value.